Hello everybody, let's hope that this video is coming through. So here's what I want to talk about. Let's talk about setting up a Pi game. So this will be the very first of our graphic simulator type programs. And so I've got some code here. I'd like you to just type it in. So I'm going to go through it step by step, but I'll probably put a, um, a screen capture of it uh, in a PDF and you can use that. But let me go ahead and get it out of here and I'll just go through everything that we're doing here one little step at a time. So when you open up a session in Spider, it starts off with this thing like that. So you should be looking at something about like this. This, uh, These triple quote marks in Python, it's like a bulk comment command. Think of it that way. It's just something that the machine's not going to interpret. So um, I discussed that in a previous video. So where... It's not technically a uh, comment, but it's, uh, what the heck is this thing called? Hold on just a second. So this is just, it's called a long string literal, but treat it like a comment. <laughs> so um, basically it's like, uh, it just is treated like a long string. Okay, so what is the code that I want you to type in here? The first thing is we installed Pygame, so let's import that. Now, when I hit enter, notice I've got this yellow warning sign. Pygame is imported, but it's not used. Okay, so that's good. So it was able to import it. It just is saying, hey, didn't you want to do something with it? All right, so the first thing we need to do is initialize Pygame. So remember, the pound symbol here is a comment. So I'm making a comment. Now, I'm going to say Pygame which again is the name of the module that we're importing. And then I'm gonna say init. So that will initialize the Pi game space. Now, when we make a little game space, it's gonna open up a little window that lets us do graphics. And the window can have a title. So that's called the caption. So I'm gonna say Pi game display set underscore caption. Then I'm gonna put a caption in there. All right, so I've got a caption, and now what? So here, I'm gonna define a color. So with Python and a lot of other computers, you define a color by three uh, parameters. It's like the red, green, and blue, or something like that. But I'm gonna say black is equal to zero, zero amounts of each of the three colors that Python is capable of doing. All right, so what else am I going to do? I'm going to set a width for my screen. Wide equals 700. And let's set a height for it. We'll call that 702. Now, Pygame will use something called size to paint the screen, and it needs to be two parameters, the width and the height. So we're going to say size equals wide tall. Okay, so I'm using variable names here, right? So I could just use the numbers, but I'm not going to do that. All right, and then lastly, we're going to tell Pygame to set the size of the screen to this size here. So I'm going to say screen equal pygame.display.set mode size. So that's telling it how big it needs to be. So make this a little bit bigger. All right, so now the last thing we're going to do is we're going to make the screen appear and then we're going to make it disappear when we say it's done. <laughs> All right, so first we're going to say done equals false. We're not going to make the screen disappear until it is done and done will be true. All right, so now the other thing we need to do is we need to manage time in a video game. So I'm going to say clock equal my game time clock. Pretty sure clock is capitalized there. And I'm not getting an error message. All right, so um, boy, that's pretty exciting, right? <laughs> that's really not uh, not much, is it? So uh, what would happen if we ran it? It actually ran. It made this thing. Whoops. Where? Let's see if I can get it. I I can't move it. Uh, there we go. It created this, 
created this game space. Well, what if I want to get rid of it? And I click on this. Oh my goodness, it's not doing it. It's not going away. So why didn't it go away when I clicked on that? It didn't go away because we didn't program it to let it know how it did it. It gave me some kind of error message when I kept clicking it incessantly. But let me run this again. So here it is, and then you can see it says this is my caption, right? This is what I put here, and it prints out there. So it's not responding. Um, but it made it 700 wide, 700 tall, and then it just it's not doing anything. And like I'll try and kill it. Die. It says it's not responding. It doesn't like it. Okay, so uh, we need to put some more smarts in here. We just we kind of painted the screen and then didn't tell Python to do anything with it. So. Let me close this program. Close it. Oh, don't worry. You don't tell. Don't tell on us to Microsoft. Okay. So now let's put in some more code. What I want is when I click that red box up in the corner, I want that thing to uh, close down the screen that it just painted. So let's create a loop. While wow, not done. Now, what does that mean, done? Done is a variable. And it's a variable that's either true or false. If done is false, so while not done, so done is false, not false means it's going to keep going. When done is true, then it's no longer not done. Hard to conceive of because it's, it's kind of backwards, right? We've got double negatives in here. Um, that's one way you could do it. If that is just really confusing you, then um, you could change this and just say like open. I think open might be reserved, but yeah, it is. Uh, let's say uh, let's say run maybe. Yeah, run equals true. So if you wanted, if you don't want to do that double negative, you could say while run. Okay, so what are we going to do while run? We're going to say for event in pygame event dot get. Okay, so we're gonna we're gonna grab events from pygame. We're gonna say what is pygame telling us is going on, uh, and then we're gonna say if event type is equal to now remember in Python is equal to is two equals if we're setting a value it's just one equal Pygame game quit that is what that uh, red square is that's Pygame game quit then we're gonna say run equal false now notice when I say run equals false it makes it orange true and false are reserved words okay and it's what makes things work this way. All right, let me go ahead and back out of here a little bit. Um, display flip, I'll kind of explain that in a second. Now we're gonna say click a uh, clock, tick 60. This is basically saying how long the, your, your machine can run this code so fast that it's kind of beyond human beings ability to, uh, to do it. So um, this is sending the clock to I think it's 60 milliseconds. And then we're going to say at the end, game quit. Okay, so what did we just do? So while we're running, oh, it doesn't like that. Run undefined name run. Oh, uppercase, run. So I'm going to run DMC, a proper name. Okay, so while run, we're going to get the events from Pygame. And then if it's Pygame quit, then we're going to flip this flag. Instead of true, it's going to be false. And then it'll leave, and then it'll quit Pygame. Um, we've got one command I haven't explained, and I'll do that in a little bit. The clock tick just sets like how long this loop will go every time it goes. Let me run it and see if this thing works. Now, notice it doesn't say not responding. And what if I click this thing now? It 
goes away. All right, so that means it actually worked. So this creates the game space. What it, all it did was it just created the space that lets us do a game. I mean, obviously, this is the world's worst video game. It just sets up a black screen and doesn't do anything. And then, ooh, we can click this button. Ooh, I win. <laughs> that, that is the only thing we can do. But this is just sort of setting up the board so that we can get ready to do um, other things with Pi Games. So what kind of things would we do with Pi Game? Well, let's, let's, draw, let's draw a ping pong ball on there. We'll, we'll create maybe a simple pong game and see how that goes.